So there's a few things that you probably take for granted. One of them is probably how you manage your SSL. I bring this up because the company I used to work for, which is Netlify, has had a partnership with Let's Encrypt for the longest time. And I wanna talk about how this has changed the game and how we manage our SSL forever. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Real quick before we jump in the video, I just wanna mention I did a thing and I created a course and it's all about automation on GitHub. So if you're interested, check out leveluptutorials.com. Scroll down, you'll see a video called Code Automation with GitHub. Uh, this is the video course I put together on how you can improve your developer workflow, do automation, use GitHub Actions, GitHub Apps, uh, all that stuff. Check it out, it's available to you today. But I saw this tweet go out this week. So it was a tweet from Let's Encrypt uh, and they mentioned their partnership with Netlify for five years. But what does that mean? One, you can click into this blog post and check out that content there. But two, when this partnership was enacted, uh, I was actually at Netlify and I was working as a full stack developer. And at that time, I had never successfully set up SSL myself on any site I developed. And I've been noticed at this time, I've done it about eight years. So I had a couple years of basically not encrypting any of my content on the internet. Uh, and it was mainly just, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, every time I did how to do it on places like Heroku or an AWS, you had to go through all these steps and on top of that, your certificates expire after a while. And if you aren't familiar with encrypts the web, so what way whenever your traffic goes over through the network. So that way, if you're on a public ne network, no one has access to see and read all the content on your page. Now, for a lot of my projects, I didn't really care much about this because most of my projects did not have any users. Um, And that's okay. It's okay to not have users. But I bring that up because I just never really took the time to really even learn this on my own. So when it came time to actually care about this, it actually came at the point where I was working on Netlify and we built this as a free tool for all free users on Netlify. And the way we did this is through this partnership from Let's Encrypt. So now Let's Encrypt, they essentially take the process of generating your SSL cert. So I'm not gonna go into details of how SSL works and Let's Encrypt works. Uh, I actually think that that DevOps guy on YouTube does a really good explanation of how Let's Encrypt works, as well as how you can set up Let's Encrypt yourself if you wanted to and point that to whatever web server you have of your choice. So he goes into really good detail. So watch this video. I've been watching his content for the past couple months, actually for the past year, uh, cause he was one of the early folks to actually talk about GitHub Actions. And uh, I've been following his channel ever since. So if you want to get into DevOps content, check out his channel. Uh, but I will say that Let's Encrypt is a nonprofit that's providing TLS certificates to over 240 million websites, uh, which is amazing that they're, they're doing this. For all the time that it saves Netlify customers, they are going to donate money directly to, to Let's Encrypt. Now, this completely changed the game for me because I never even cared about HTTPS or TLS and uh, Netlify is giving it to me for free on all of my Netlify sites. Now, not all my sites had a custom domain, but I want to point out that at this time, companies like Vercel, Heroku, even GitHub Pages, they didn't provide TLS for either for free or at all. Also, you didn't have to pay to add a custom domain too. That was another thing they all charge $5 a month for the benefit of having a custom domain and getting SSL encryption on your site. Now, I think that it was fair to charge that, but I think what Netlify did is they actually gave it away for free. So it broke the business model for folks who were building these quick up and running cloud deployment platforms for getting your statically generated sites. I saw from my vantage point for being a Netlify employee, I saw all the other companies follow in suit and focus on giving away this feature for free. And I think we all benefited for it because no longer did you have to focus on, should I pay $5 to have SSL encryption on my site? Um, no, because everybody was already doing that. And what was really interesting is a year, literally, so July of 2017 is when Netlify announced they were gonna sponsor Let's Encrypt after you're already using Let's Encrypt for, after already using Let's Encrypt for about a year. Google came out and announced that the next version of Chrome was going to be enforcing HTTPS by default. Uh, and this is something that was huge. It's something you see infrequently, but every now and then you'll see it. Whenever you approach a site that doesn't have SSL encryption or their certificate expires, you will get a, a warning on Google Chrome saying, hey, this is not a safe site. Do you want to proceed? And they kind of bury the, um, do you want to proceed <laughs> nested inside of a, a link? 
And it's always really annoying. And most of the time what I do is I click off. Now this is problematic because also for SEO reasons, if you don't have SSL encryption on your site, you're gonna take a huge hit on SEO if you don't have SSL encryption on your site. So this made a sort of a bull run for everybody else to enable to make sure that SSL was an option for deploying your site to their web service. I do want to point out that Let's Encrypt does not do the automation of regenerating your certificates. So you only have certificates for a limited amount of time. The regeneration for 90 days is really focused around security reasons. So you have to regenerate that certificate so that way security and hackers do not have an opportunity to sort of uh, break that encryption of your website and be able to read all that traffic. This would be pretty, I mean, as the process of regenerating regener that cert and having the reminders and setting up a calendar, uh, actually I've been up involved of these sort of like rodeos, these everybody gets on a call or everybody gets in the same room and we sort of regenerate our SSL certificate. Now I mentioned I was, I didn't do DevOps. I was an SRE. Um, I wasn't even a barely a uh, senior engineer. The beauty of this is that companies like Netlify and other companies like Heroku, they all give you an option to re regenerate your certificate automatically. So they'll swap it for you with little little to or no downtime, uh, which is absolutely perfection. Now, there's possibly a reason that maybe you aren't using Let's Encrypt, but I do highly recommend if you are gonna host on a web service or a web platform, I think Let's Encrypt's the way to go. Uh, if you wanna use something that also performs the automation. Perhaps you are running your own servers or you're running your own cloud on bare metal. Uh, you can actually use a tool which is open source called Caddy, uh, which also does that sort of orchestration. It's built in Go and it actually does that orchestration for you. But okay, so what I'm getting at is uh, I think what Netlify did, uh, one, by making SSL free and accessible to all, uh, it kind of, it changes the game. And I think that's something that I think a lot of folks um, might oversee and might overthink too as well where at a time when no one was giving this away for free, it was kind of a pain of a process to actually do this on your own. A company would actually go, not only leverage this open source tool, make it accessible to you through auto, like through their own automation and orchestration practices that it abstracts away from the user, and then and turn around and then sponsor that project to make sure that a project is around and long lasting. Uh, I think that's like hats off to Netlify for doing that. Hats off to all the other companies who are sponsoring Let's Encrypt. And I do want to encourage, if you work at a company and you're using open source software, I do encourage you, why not sponsor those projects? There's a lot of tools out there, which is like, folks are probably really familiar with GitHub sponsors. If you aren't, maybe you're familiar with Tidelift or Open Collective. Encourage your company, your engineering managing team. Uh, if you have the bandwidth, if you have the time, contribute back to open source, either through your time or through your money. And uh, and uh, I say all this because um, I just saw this firsthand and I just wanted to share part of my story and my experience. That's pretty much all I have to say about this topic. So see you on the next one.